Hello everyone. I'm going to set the scene for today by giving you some sayings and there's one or two little images that I can show you as well. So again, apologies to those listening on the telephone that you're not going to see the images, but you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So here go some of the sayings and the first few have got the images with them. So I'm going to draw an image here and it's the shape of a heart and it's in gold. So heart of gold. That's the first one. Do you know what this one uh, here is? Um, it, of course, is heart of stone because it's heart shaped and it's in a stone. The next one, I have an image here, is of a red heart which is broken down the middle. Broken hearted. And this one can be two different things. It's an image of someone holding a really big heart. So that could be, of course, someone who has a big heart or it could be heavy hearted. So what other ones did I come up with when I was thinking of anything to do with the heart? Well, I've got someone after my own heart. And if you're talking about someone in a not a very pleasant way, you would say, oh, you're all heart. Uh, you have a bleeding heart. You could know something by heart. Cross my heart. We used to all say that, don't we? Cross my heart and hope to die. Faint of heart. Follow your heart. From the heart. Have your heart set on something. Your heart's in your mouth. Your heart's in the right place. It's the heart of the matter. You're young at heart. Your heart skips a beat. Heavy heart. You nearly gave me a heart attack. So our theme today is about the heart and God's law is in their minds and he writes it on their hearts. For let's be honest, we all know right from wrong. You have written your law upon our hearts and inscribed your life upon our lives. You have made yourself known to us in sign and symbol, in still small voice, and in the centre of our souls through the song of your spirit. So we come, still scattered, but still we come to worship you, for we are your people and you are our God. Today I'm playing hymn 501, Take This Moment, Sign and Space. I'll play two verses. Let us hear the word from the book of Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord. 
because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Amen. A phrase that we now hear during this COVID-19 pandemic is a new normal. Have we said it before or, you know, in inverted brackets, a new normal or when things were normal? So a new normal. We speak about the fact that whenever we come out of COVID-19, one thing we cannot expect is to return to normal. From bigger things to smaller things, inevitably, things will have changed. Some of the change, though, will cause us to lament about the aspects of life or society that we've lost. And other changes, well, they might be more than acceptable as a reprioritizing of our values and the habits that now take place. History, well, history teaches us the cynical nature of society. The teaching of the Bible is no different. Of course, we believe that God remains un un unchanged, constant, dependable, but of course, eternal. Yet we also see that the way that the way that the way of God and how people respond to God and how they know God changes as the story of the covenant progresses. So in the story we heard there, Jeremiah comes to us in a moment of cynical change amidst a period of biblical history. And scholars often describe this time as a crisis. Jeremiah unveils a new covenant between God and the house of Israel. This covenant, however, is not embodied in something visual. Often we use these visual aspects as a reminder of the covenant. We think of the rainbow and Noah, the tablets of stone, manna from heaven, water from the ground for Moses, and the wilderness people. We are moving here into a covenant that is not set in stone, in time and place. It's not one particular context of human need that is organic and fluid and adaptive to the time, but challenges and needs of the moment. This is because it is what we would term as a living covenant. It is amongst the people, etched into the very being of the people of God. This covenant is anchored in the heart of each living son and daughter of God. Not in outward symbols, it is internalised in each of us. An unmediated connection to God through the unbreakable bond of his love known in each of us. Such an understanding that Jeremiah encourages us, not just as a covenant theory, as if only we know about how, how God's love works, Instead, it is about learning how we live in and through the covenant of love. For God's people, there is knowledge and feeling of God's love that goes on with us, whatever we go through in our lives. And we find that hard to understand and accept. But we find such truth not in words that are written or in the things that we're actually told, or physical things that we see, but instead the truth of God's love is found in how, well, how we see it and how it makes us feel. That feeling is the experience of covenant, that confidence of being loved by God. Despite our extraordinary capacity, to mess things up, still God comes back to us time and time again. New life and transformation come in cycles. 
The living covenant is fluid and intuitive, not fixed and static. The covenant means that as God goes with us, he is not left behind on some stone tablets or constantly disappearing when the sun's rays change and the, the refraction of sunlight ceases. God becomes present in everything that we experience. Additionally, this covenant means that God's glory is revealed in and through what we say and do. God's love is written on our hearts and we become known as God's people through what we do and how we influence the society and the world around us. The stories through Lent be the ancient teachings of Jeremiah, the foundational stories of Noah, Abraham and Moses, or stories from Jesus' life as he approaches his death, all seek to remind us that God remains connected to us. He is not distant. He is not left behind in the wilderness or in that stone tomb. He lives on and he lives on in and through us. Lord, you knew strength of purpose, a purpose from which you refused to waver, even when confronted with all manner of temptation and in the face of death itself. You knew the things that were yours to do. May we, in these days of confusion, know your purpose, your will for our lives. May we discern what is ours to do and glorify you by getting on with the tasks that you reveal are ours for this day and this hour. And amidst all the competing voices that call us in so many directions, may we hear clearly and unequivocally the voice from heaven that assures us that you have got this, that you are God and we are not. And your call to us today is to stand firm, to be still and listen, and to follow wherever you lead, bringing glory to your name for love's sake. Let us pray. Loving God, we come before you today with thanksgiving. We are glad to know you through your son Jesus. We come to offer our prayers for the world and for all those who are suffering just now. Lord, we are grateful for the relationship we have with you and all it brings us. We pray for anyone who has yet to discover your invitation or for anyone who has previously turned it down. Lord, may they come to know you and love you. Lord, we are grateful for all the people you have blessed us to know and for all those relationships mean to us. We pray for anyone who has lost touch or fallen out with a friend and who desires to reconnect and reconcile their relationship. Lord, we are grateful for all who give their time and talents to further your kingdom, especially elders, readers, ordained local ministers, deacons, parish ministers, priests, bishops, pastors, regional and national staff, and all those working locally. We pray for all who are discerning a call to serve your church in a new way. May they choose to serve you and follow where you lead. Lord, we are grateful for all who serve others in the armed forces, in the medical services, in the fire service, and in a voluntary way through many charities that help other people. We pray for all who are considering joining a service and for those who use these services and benefit from them. In a moment's silence, we offer the people and places we know of where your presence and healing touch are needed today. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers and for promising to always answer them. Give us patience to wait and courage to serve. Amen. 
going to play him 557 will love that will not let me go um i find this is a very sad but beautiful tune it was one of my mum's favorites and i've got her sitting beside me here on the piano so i'll play two verses Jesus is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow. With that confidence and that hope, let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord all the days of our lives. And so may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the companionship of the Holy Spirit go with you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>